Hello, everyone. My name is Gabriel, and I'm a senior instructor here with Unity Learning. In this video, I'll be going over the 2020 sample exam for the AP Computer Science A test question two after it has been adjusted in response to the coronavirus. So, in brief summary, the changes to the AP CSA exam this year due to the coronavirus are that it's just split into two questions, the first one being 25 minutes and the second one being 15 minutes long, whereas the first question is covering arrays and array lists, and the second question is focusing on methods and control structures. If you want further details, you can check out our other video that fully summarizes the changes from the AP CS exam in further detail. So let's go ahead and get started. For context in this question, I'll be going over the thinking process and how I approach the problem and how I solve the problem, the code required, and my response to whatever questions there might be inside this video. In order to simulate a relatively legitimate testing environment, I have not pre-written the code anywhere, I haven't pre-solved the problem, and I'm going to be talking through my thinking process and how I approach a problem, deconstruct it, and solve it and write efficiently within the time limits. So go ahead and pause the video here and go through the problem. If you want to, you can start a timer for yourself, but you can go ahead and take this time to read over the problem yourself before you begin. Okay, so next we're going to go ahead and get started on the problem. Currently it's 3.01 in my time and I have 15 minutes in order to solve this problem. I have already pre-opened a Google Doc with whatever response questions there might be, and a replit with some Java just so I can like look at the different syntax and make sure there aren't any strong syntax errors whenever I'm trying to submit my code. And I already have the quick reference open that it says right here, just Java quick reference. And let's go ahead and begin. So, okay. These are pretty much the same notes that we always have regarding, yes, you can import these classes, Inside the quick from the quick reference, you can use the parameters and method calls that are not null. And again, the preconditions are satisfied. This is really important because of things like this precondition here that num with check digit will be greater than or equal to zero. That's really important because that allows us to assume some things about the input. We don't have to handle negative input, for example, in that case. And other things like number of digits in the number is between one and six inclusive. That's also really good for us because we don't have to verify that it's an invalid input, for example. Okay, so 15 minutes and five minutes to submit. Let's go ahead and start reading the problem. So check digits, which can be used to help detect if an error has occurred when a number is entered or transmitted electronically. And we have a check digit class here, and it says we'll have to write one method. Okay, so let's be on the lookout for which method we have to implement. So we have this nice get check function that takes in a number and returns the check digit for num. Now that doesn't quite entirely make sense yet what a check digit is, but we can just move on for now. So okay, let's keep on reading. So we have this is valid that will return true if the num with check digit is valid or false otherwise as described in part A. Okay, so we're going to get more instructions about this and we'll find out more about what this will be. So the number of digits and num with check digit is between two and seven inclusive. Okay, so first we need to write the is valid method. The method returns true if its parameter num with check digit, which returns a number containing its check digit, is valid and false otherwise. The check digit is always the rightmost digit of num with check digit. Okay, and for example, if we had get check called, then we'd have two as a response. Okay. And for example, is valid, 100, uh, 1,592, it should return true because we pass in 159 to get check and we get out two, that's the last digit. Okay, whereas is valid, we pass in 159 to get check and we, had, we got two out, but we had three, that means it's false. Okay, so now we have this nice function and the function signature. Let's go ahead and start working on this. So the first thing I think of is Okay, so we need to... The one thing that seemed really suspicious to me is, okay, why does this have one and six digits versus this having two to seven digits? And, well, this explains it. 
is because the last digit will always be cut off and is used as a check digit. So that's really what a check digit means. It's just like the last digit of whenever a number will pass. Okay, so how do we get that check digit? So we should use a mod operator immediately. So we should store this and say check digit equals num with check digits mod 10. Because since this is base 10, then we can just mod by 10 to get the very last digit of here. And in order to get the value that should be checked, we could say, um, <clears throat> we could say like, subtract check digit from num with check digit and then divide by 10, but we can do it simpler than that. We can say like, check value is equal to uh, num with check digits. And one way to do it is to say like, the math function here to get the floor of a value. So it doesn't look like, okay, so it doesn't look like we're actually provided the floor here, which is unfortunate. But if we say like dividing by 10, then from, you should have learned inside of APCS one or two that dividing by 10 and assigning to the integer value should actually have like the integer value. So for example, we can like even do like a quick sanity check up here in like main and say like, <clears throat> and do something like the is valid with 1952. And just like in order to not make this throw an error, then we can just say return false for now and just make sure that this works properly. So I still have my code left over here from the previous gizmo question, just because I wanted to make it clear. So from question one that is in the previous walkthrough. So I'm just going to replace my code here. And yeah, we're going to have a syntax error because of that. So 159, that's exactly what we expect. Even if we were to say 1593, then we still have our 159 here. Of course, now that you know this, then you don't have to do this yourself manually checking inside the actual exam. You can just move on. So we have this get check function it says, so, okay. And then now we just need to validate this. So if get check of our check value equals check digits, return true, else return false. So this here is saying, okay, if the get check matches our check digit, then we can return true. Otherwise, then we can return false. Okay, now let's make sure that we didn't mess any edge conditions in which we have to return true or false. Edge conditions being like, maybe have a zero or something. And it looks like since the precondition covers this, we'll have a certain value and it'll be greater than zero, so it won't be negative. So we don't need to cover any of those kinds of things. And it only ever returns true or false. True if the check digit is valid, false otherwise if it doesn't, if it's not valid. Okay, and let's check the time. We have spent seven minutes so far. So let's move on. Program wants to modify the check digit class to keep track of how many times a call to is valid is made with an incorrect check digit. Any time a call to is valid is made with an incorrect check digit, the count should be increased by one. Should like to implement this change without making any changes to the signature of the is valid method or overloading is valid. So that's important because we shouldn't change any things that currently exist. Okay, so, so we can't change the signature of is valid, but what do we know about this? Well, we want to keep track of how many times a call to is valid is made with an incorrect check digit. So, okay, the count should be increased by one. So the first thing you should think about is saying like, okay, if this is, if this is invalid, incorrect, then the count should increase by one. So let's just add a line here that might say like incorrect count plus plus. So we increment this, but okay, well, where does this come from? And that's another question, right? So 
the easiest way for us to do this would be say, okay, so therefore we have a private variable that is called like incorrect count or something else. So you can just access it from the check digit function uh, from the check digit class and just increment this private variable right here. And that seems like the correct solution. It doesn't really seem like we need to do anything else. There aren't necessarily really any trade-offs that would happen here. Let's think of alternate solutions if we were to call another method with every time that there's an incorrect check. Well, that doesn't really seem to be that useful because it's just one line of code. And we already know that we need a private variable and that method would also have to do some kind of private variable unless it has some kind of static private variable, which isn't necessary because that's not really what the question is asking to use a static variable across all check digit classes. So that's pretty much it. I just say, okay, then whenever I'm writing this up and whatever text process sir, you're in, I'd say something like, first create a private variable named <coughs> incorrect count in the check digit class. This will be an integer. So we should specify that's an integer because this question tells us specifically that we need to say what visibility and type it will be. And then write a description of how you change the class. Okay, so then in the isValid function method, every time that uh, a number was deemed invalid, then it would increment incorrect count by one. And that's pretty much all we need to say here because there really aren't any other changes that we're making to the code. And obviously you submit this somewhere else most likely, but I'm just going to stick my solution up here for however you're submitting it. And okay, so we spent about 12 minutes or so, so we can go back over our previous solution and make sure that everything is fine. Now I've gone through this material a little bit fast because I want to simulate how it'd be working under time pressure, which is an interesting constraint in which you might have to pre-think or try and predict what kinds of questions they might ask you. So, okay, let's go back over this. So is valid? Yes, we're going to check the parameter and is it, it has a check digit, okay. and is it valid, true, and false? Otherwise, it's always the rightmost digit of number check digit. So we identified that as the ones digit, which you can just rip off with the mod operator to get the ones digit. And then divided by 10, will give you the first, the left digits minus the rightmost digit. Okay. And we're saying if the check value, if the get check of the check value is equal to check digit that we stripped off, then we're true. Else, oh, and get rid of that because that's, that shouldn't exist inside the solution already. And our, our preconditions mean that we don't have to handle those edge cases. Is the, yeah, so the signature of the get check is also correct. And that looks pretty good on that question. It looks like we satisfied all the constraints and we don't have to write anything for edge conditions. Okay, and then B, all we need to do is say, every time that we have an incorrect check digit, then the count should be increased by one. And we're doing that by adding a private variable and incrementing that private variable by one every time in the, before returning false. You probably don't need that detail, but it never really hurts to have the extra detail. So thanks for going through this video with me. I know that this is a little bit fast, but I want to show you how I'd respond under the time constraints to the questions provided and how you think about the problems given the time constraints. So let me know down below in the comments if you have any other questions, if anything wasn't quite clear and you'd like me to explain further. 
and best of luck on the exam.